Baptist Church family. Uh, today is uh, January the 10th, 2021. Time that we come together again to uh, meet and uh, rejoice in the Lord and celebrate what God has done. Uh, give Him the honor and the glory uh, that He so richly deserves. And we uh, just pray that today finds you doing well. We uh, have all the best wishes we can for you and your family. Uh, we are praying. Uh, that God will bring us back together soon. Uh, we look forward to that just right around the bend. So we'll be letting you know. So be looking uh, for your text message on Remind. And uh, if you will, if you're one of those folks that gets a Remind about our church service and uh, the times and that kind of stuff, if you would pass that along to someone else that might not be getting that Remind. Uh, we, uh, we do welcome you today, though. And uh, just want to let you know... Uh, that uh, Ricky has made it back home. Ricky Whitehead has made it back home doing well. Uh, just uh, rejoice with him and Miss Carolyn uh, that uh, Shane is at home. Uh, he's doing well as well. Uh, Vic is continuing to take his uh, uh, treatments and uh, tolerating them well. So we just pray for those guys. And of course, we pray for Mr. Billy. We lift him up, Mr. Billy Havard and Miss Jean, as he continues uh, to. Uh, uh, just take day by day as the Lord gives him. Uh, but 
we pray uh, again that today finds you doing well. I do want to remind you about uh, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, it will be finishing up at the end of this month. So we just pray that uh, if you would be willing to give, uh, that you would make that note in the memo of your check or write it on an envelope and turn that in so that we can get that all together and get that sent off to the place that it is needed to be. I want to give you one other update. It was, uh, this past Thursday, uh, Tommy and Tommy Combs and I got the opportunity uh, to go uh, to Franklin County High School and serve our, our church, Roxy Baptist Church, there in the cafeteria uh, with uh, Franklin Baptist Association on the Feed the Teachers Day. What a privilege it was. The, the meals uh, we took, uh, our church furnished uh, uh, some 70 pounds of, uh, of uh, or there about 70 pounds of uh, tenderloin uh, cut up and then taken uh, to the school and served on the line. And it was pre-packaged and packaged in plates already to go. Uh, they came through, picked up their plate, picked up their dessert, but we also had the opportunity to stand in, uh, there and uh, assist by helping put, in, put the stuff in the bags for them, pouring tea, those kinds of things, and just telling the teachers how much we appreciate them and thank you for all that they do. And we were also able to encourage them by just giving them a good old blessing of, uh, of God's presence from his people and also give them the wish that God might bless them and continue to use them. So pray for our teachers. Pray for those that are serving us right there in Franklin County in School and all across our state uh, that are dealing with uh, our students as well as COVID. So pray for those. But we were uh, so thankful we were able to serve Roxy Baptist Church, Franklin Baptist Association, but most of all, they were able to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and serving others. So uh, as we get started today, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity again to meet together. Father, we're just so grateful, Lord, that we uh, have had a, a good past week, Lord, with good weeks to come. And Father God, Lord, we trust you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to live for you. Father, we pray for our church family, for those that are sick, and Lord, those that are hurting. Lord, we lift them up to you. Father, we pray you might continue to wrap your loving arms around them, encourage them, strengthen them. Father, Lord, we pray... Uh, for Braden Whitehead, Father God, Lord. Uh, excuse me, Braden White and uh, the Whitehead family. That is Keith and Stacy and, of course, uh, Terry and Janine Diaby. Father, those families, Lord, suffering with the loss of a brother-in-law and Braden, the loss of a father. So, Father, we pray, Lord, uh, for Braden White. We lift him up, Lord. Uh, it's got to be uh, awful to receive a call while you're serving in the military uh, that your father has lost his life. So, Father... And the passing of, uh, of, of Eric, Father, we just pray now that you would comfort this family, comfort Braden, be with him, strengthen him. Father, we pray that it's in times like this, Lord, uh, that we draw close, closer to you as you draw close to us to comfort. And Father, Lord, today as we study your word, uh, that idea that, that stressed to be impressed, Lord, impress upon us the need for you to express uh, to impress upon us your love for us. And Father God, Lord, to impress upon us who you are and who we are. And Father, to impress upon others, Lord, your goodness through us as we let our light shine. So Father God, Lord, we're grateful, Lord, that you have allowed us to be in your house today. Father, we pray for the services all over our county, our state, and our nation. Father, we lift up our president to you. Lord, we lift up, Lord, the changes that are being made. Father, we pray that you be honored and glorified in all of them. Father, we lift up all of our leaders to you. Father, we ask, Lord, that you strengthen. Lord, that you lead and guide and direct each and every one of them. Father, we need you. Father, we need you more than ever. And Father, Lord, we pray. Lord, today, as we come together, Lord, though it be by video feed, Father, we pray that the name of Jesus is lifted up on high and that he receives the honor and the glory that he so richly deserves. Father, again, we say thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. And Father, we ask that you might forgive us for the times we failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ the living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what hearts could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory hallelujah praise the one who set me hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. God, you are my living hope.
are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you We make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are We make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you. Worship you, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are way maker miracle worker promise 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. This morning, uh, in the study of God's Word, we're going to be looking in uh, 2 Corinthians again. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 and 22. We're going to use those two uh, verses as our, our, our stepping off point, or our getting off into where we want to go. Because we're going to look at the life of Noah today. But I, I, want, I, I, thought, I found these verses... Uh, a, a week, a little over a week ago, and uh, or two weeks ago now, when I was studying about how we would start our new year, and then what we would do, uh, how we would start this year in God's Word, and I just thought I thought about all the stress and all the stuff that we've got, and then as God gave me that title, stress to impress. There is no doubt that in this life we're going to face challenges. We're going to share in those challenges sometimes. Sometimes those challenges are challenges that we must face alone. Sometimes those are challenges that we face with just our, our, our immediate family. But as those challenges come to us, then there's that idea, where do we turn or what do we do? And you know, as we talked about this, you know, how do we get through these challenges that we're bound to face? If we live long enough, sooner or later, we're going to have a challenge and it's going to stress us out or we're going to begin to question. We're not going to know exactly how to respond because of the uncertainty or, or because of the circumstance. You know, as a people of faith, though, we have to tell ourselves that God is with us. We have to begin to know that God has a plan, that God is going to uh, do and uh, you know, you know what? Uh, that one who has begun a good work will complete it. That's what we are trying to get to. And I want you to understand that. You know, <coughs> excuse me. I believe that uh, and, and on that Monday night at Mount Zion Baptist Church, when God reached out and took me out of my sin, calling me first to salvation, then calling me into the life to walk as a believer, then calling me to preach, that I believe. That he who begun a good work is going to complete it. Now I want you to understand something. Keeping in mind there, just like Paul. Just like Paul. I too can share with you, if, if we had the opportunity or had uh, the time, I could share with you the times that I have failed. I could share with you my fears. I could share with you many, many different things. That's what Paul here was doing with the church at Corinth. You know, he, he tried to be sincere in his heart because, see, they questioned his integrity. They questioned his sincerity. They questioned his motives. What are our motives today in serving the Lord? Do we really have a heart for Christ? Do we really have a heart for the church? Do we really believe that God is in control and do we live like it and do we step out on faith? Because see, I want you to understand, as we talked about this last week and as a reminder, I want to throw that back out at you again. You know, the first step in handling or fixing a problem is this. It's going to depend on how you look at it. Remember that? Depends on how you look at it. 
If you believe the problem is bigger than you, if you believe the problem is bigger than God, if you believe there's no hope or there's no help, then guess what? There's going to be no hope and no help. Because you're not even willing to do the things that are need to be done. I've seen something this week that I thought spoke, uh, uh, oh man, just spoke, I guess you'd say, uh, tremendous uh, truths in this idea. And that was this. You know what? God is in control. But propping up on a shovel won't get the hold of it. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I want you to understand this. That we can believe that God is in control. We can be believing God for something. But there's some work that yet has to be done by us to get to where God is at. You know what? God is going to deliver us. It may not be today. But God's in the delivering business. So therefore, we've got to get to that day that we're fully and completely delivered. That's why I love these verses. Listen to what these words say again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 20 through 22. For all the promises of God in Him, that is Christ. Get this. For all the promises of God in Him, or Christ, are yes. In other words, God would not make you a promise in Jesus Christ that He did not intend to keep, to bring to Full belief to bring to um, full bloom to bring to the end. For all the promises of God in Him, Christ, are yes, and in Him, Amen. You know what? I, I, I meant to say this last week, but it means so be it. But I like the idea of the so be it means that, that he says, you know what? The promises are this. I will not leave you for, nor forsake you. He who's begun a, a work will complete that. He who has begun the good work will complete it. That completion, the finishing, the amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God. Now, think about that. He who has established us with you in Christ has anointed us in God. He's given us something. That one that started all this, the one who begun the good work, he, it says, who also has sealed us. You know what? I love that idea. Who has sealed us. His stamp of approval. His stamp of approval on us. And has given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You know what? I want you to understand something. Kim and I were talking about this. There's something about Jesus. There's something about knowing Christ. When you see all that's going on in the world and we look and we see the man that Jesus could step out any minute and go get God's children. But the fact is, are you ready? Yeah, there'd be a lot of things that I would miss seeing. You know, I want to see Gatlin grow up. I want to see Briggs grow up. I want to see how Brock turns out and what he becomes and whether or not Ryan and Olivia have another, have a baby. You know, I, I want to see uh, my daughter uh, face lights up when her son falls in love with a young lady and asks her to be his wife. I want to see all those things. I really would. So we wouldn't want to cut life short. But, you know what? When Jesus comes, it's going to all be good. We don't have to suffer the bad things of this life. We're going to suffer God's presence. Boy, what a, what a suffering, right? No, we're going to enjoy God's bless, uh, presence. You know what? And I, I want you to see that today through this. You know what? I want you to understand that. And you know what? I want you to understand what Paul understood. Paul knew that though Paul may, may stumble, though that Paul may fall, Paul knew that the God Almighty, the one and the only, who was above all and over all, was on his side. He knew within his spirit as a guarantee, he knew that God, who is good, said he promised that he would do 
in him and for him. You know what? It was personal. It was personal to Paul, his God. But also it's personal to God. You know what? I want you to understand God would not make those promises to us if he didn't intend on it. You know what? And today as we look at the life of Noah, and you know what? As we look and uh, draw from it that the idea of the stresses and the challenges that Noah faced in his everyday life and how it affected him and how it shaped him, how it shaped his family. And how can we learn from Noah? You know what? The story of Noah, we always associate what? The great flood and destruction and the wiping out. But you see, that goes back to how we look at it. God was fixing a problem. And so many times we think about the flood. We think about the destruction. We think about the death. But I want you to understand something, folks. That's not what this was about. Yes, God was ridding the earth of wickedness. But I want you to understand what God was doing. God was also delivering, delivering Noah and his family. You know what? What was the challenge that Noah faced in his day? It's the same challenge that you and I face today. It's the same one that Paul faced in his day. And that is this. What is our duty even today in this moment? What is our duty? You know what? To love the Lord God with all our heart. Soul, mind, and spirit, and our strength. But I want you to know something else. That if others are going to know Jesus, if they're going to know Jesus, then we need to be taking seriously our walk and our stance with Christ. And that's why I want to remind you again of, of Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is speaking again on the Sermon on the Mount. And listen, we're going to be using these verses here every week as we get into our, our, our actual verses we're going to talk about. But I want you to listen to these verses again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16, real quick. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how much salt, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. That they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know what? In Israel's day, salt, that is pure salt, did not lose its flavor. When salt in that day would get mixed with other ingredients, it was exposed to, uh, and when it was exposed to those elements, then that salt would be leached out. You know what? Making it only good to coat the pathways or the roads with. Think about that. So you got the pure salt, the salt that it can serve the purpose. Remember? Love had a purpose. Love served its purpose. Salt has a purpose. Salt must be used for the purpose. You know what? Also, when you think about this, light is not something that we as humans normally on our own possess. Light is this. Light is something that we reflect. You know what I want you to understand? When we call upon Jesus, He gives us His Spirit, which is light. Jesus is light. And when He indwells within us, then we reflect who He is. I want you to understand that we are a, a reflection of that which is within us. If there's evil within us, then you know what? It's going to be acted out and you're going to know it. I want you to know when the light lives within us, then we're going to go out and we're going to actually show the light. But I want you to think about this as we think about Noah. And Noah in his day. Noah, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. And now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born to them. Then the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and that they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. 
For he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those uh, were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and that he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah got three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Or Jephthah. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Father God, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you might bless the reading of your word. Father, fill us, or teach us, and lead us now. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as I think about this, I ask myself even this question. How can I use the life of Noah and learn how God can use the stress of life to impress upon us and impress us and others that he is in control and even yet that we might answer to him. The first thing that I saw in this was this. Sin effect. Sin effect. A-F-F-E-C-T. That meaning this. You know what? Having an effect make a difference too. You know what? Look what sin has done. Look what sin has done. Listen to the words again. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply, I want you to understand, there are two things that are associated and running together right here in these verses that we need to learn. Number one, the multiplying of men. That was what God said, go forth, bear fruit, and multiply. I want you to know it was a blessing of God, but at the same time, God blessed us. But then because the fall of man, I want you to understand, when sin entered in, you know what? It made a change. It made a difference. It started to have an effect. And as man began to multiply, as more men came, so did more sin. The sin became great. The wickedness. There were more people and more wickedness. You know what? I want you to understand. We face the idea of the big lie all the time on this side of glory. And that big lie is this, that men are good. Folks, I want you to know that is not true. God said here that when he looked at man, he was sorry that he had made them. Why? Because man's heart and his intent was upon evil continually. Understand here, folks, we are inherently evil. That's why we, we're selfish. We're not godly. You know what? When I want you to think about this as we see this. And when I thought about it, I had my mind always goes back to that rich young ruler. Mark chapter 10, I want to remind you what Jesus said. And Jesus said to this. Now this is the, him referring to himself. Uh, and, but he's talking about, if, if I'm going to be good, you have to understand who I am. Because no man, no man, he referred to him as teacher. You know, but he was looking at a man. He didn't look at him as God. Listen to what he says. Mark chapter 10 verse 18. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. 
God. Now, I want to tell you something. If we were really good, you know what? Jesus would have said it. But understand, that's not who we are. Why? Because sin has had its effect. You know what? I want you to understand that sin has had its effect. You know what? When we think about these more people and, and, and the idea that God said that his spirit would not strive with man forever. I want you to understand that. Uh, sin separated us from God. The effect of sin. That idea that, you know, having an effect. Making a difference too. It made a difference in us. That at one time God's Spirit walked, God walked with men. It says in the Word here that, that Noah walked with God. I want you to understand that. But I want you to understand also that if sin has an effect, that means it made a difference. It changed something. We need to understand this. You know, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 24. I want you to understand this, that, that Jesus uh, has an effect on sin. You know what? Uh, when you think about it, listen again at God's Word. Now it came to pass, uh, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and uh, the daughters who were born to them, the sons of God, saw the daughters of men. They were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of whom they all chose. Now I want you to understand, when I, when I studied this idea here first, of the, the, the idea of the, the sons of God and the, men, the daughters of men, when, when I studied into that, there were at least three studied principles there. Uh, one being the idea that this could be the godly line of Seth being the sons of God. This could be those uh, sons of God. And that the daughters uh, here could have been uh, the daughters of Cain. You know, the, the ungodly, the ones that had been cast out. And they could have come together. And had, but understand something. You know, that unevenly yoke. Who knows? We also know that there was also the idea here that it could have been that there was this kingship or this line of kings uh, that had uh, that believed in polygamy and as they came together and married and married woman upon woman and then all of a sudden it, it just became more wicked uh, because of the evil hearts of people. But also the idea of when we hear the word giant is associated with fallen. Some believe that this was uh, fallen angels and they kind of took on the form of humans. And then these relationships happened, which also did not glorify God. And uh, huh, all of a sudden, wickedness abounds. But we do know this. We do know this. We do know that God in the very beginning told man that you should not eat of this tree. Because if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. And he said, when you sh at that point, later on, he said, when he got ready, he said, you know, I'm going to cast you out of the garden. Because you've become like us, knowing good and evil. And then he also added this, and I will not allow him, man talking about, to stretch out his hand, eat of the tree of life, and live forever. In other words, we were not going to be able to live forever in a sinful condition, and that we know, he said, I'll put in an image between you talking to Satan and her seed. He was speaking of Jesus. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says it like this. Who himself bore our sins in his own body, on the tree, that we, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. By his stripes you were healed. In other words, we can have a time in our life that we die to sin, but we do it. As Paul said, those promises that God made us in Christ become true. That when we give our hearts and our lives to God through Jesus Christ, that we then can live a sinless life based upon Jesus and His righteousness. There's also sin effect. 
sin effect. And I want you to understand. Read with me again Genesis 6, 5 through 8. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of his thoughts, or excuse me, the thoughts of his heart, were only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But look at this next line, verse 8. See, this shows God's mercy. We see God's wrath, but then also we see a great picture here of God's mercy. See, with sin, Jesus said, uh, God said there will come death. But also in sin and death, Jesus said, I will, or God will say, I will put enmity between you and her seed. Speaking of Jesus. Also when he said, you know what? Man has become like us. Eating of the tree of knowledge, knowing good and evil. And he said, but I will not allow him to reach out his hand, take of the tree of life and live forever. God's mercy. You know what? God's mercy here in this picture. God's mercy. God looks out. He's unhappy with what he sees. He's going to destroy the earth and everything in it. And then he says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know what? Effect. That change, which is a result or consequences of an action. You know what? I want you to understand something. Just as it was for the sinful and the wicked, their actions require consequences. God's wrath. But also, because Noah did his best to honor God, did his best to walk with God, did his best to serve God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I want you to know that you know what? For all of us that are here, for all of us here today, we can accept that same mercy through Jesus Christ, God's Son. You know what? And then we understand what the promise was of Paul. Paul said, you know what? That all the promises in Christ, in Christ, all God's promises in Christ are yes and amen. He'll be bringing them to completion. He'll bring them to completion. Paul writes in Romans 5, 6 through 9, these words here. And that idea of what it means when we give our heart to Christ and what happens. Listen to what it says. For we, for excuse me, for when we still without strength, talking about what God has done now, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know what? When we sin, we fall away from God. We're separated from God. But then yet because we were ungodly. And in due time, get this, for scarcely a righteous man will die. Will one die? Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would dare to die. But you know what? Again, it says here in verse 8. But God demonstrated his own love toward us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know what? I want you to think about that, folks. You know what? Before I ever knew I needed salvation, Jesus died for me. Before you ever knew anything there was to know about sin as a little child, going around, did not want to do, rebelling against your parents, didn't understand what it meant to sin. You know what? That idea that God said in the very beginning, man has become like one of us now knowing good from evil. We know when we do right. We know when we do wrong. And I want you to understand something. Sin has an effect. Sin separates from God. And I want you to know what Jesus did. Jesus, because God demonstrated His love for us, He offered His Son, and Christ died for us. Because verse 9 says it this way, Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of through him. The idea that, get this, Noah, Noah in this picture here, because of God's grace, Noah was spared. Because of God's grace 
every believer today is spared through Jesus Christ. Amen. That which God set out to do from the very beginning in Genesis. When he said, I will put him in enmity between you and her seed. He sent Jesus. Christmas we celebrated that great birth of Jesus Christ. And he completed it on Calvary when he said it's finished. You know what? I want you to understand sin has had its effect and its effect. But I want you to understand the effect and the, the effect and effect of God. God's effect and God's effect. Genesis 6, 9 through 12 as we close. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Oh, well, hey, get this. What did Paul just say a while ago? Now being justified by his blood. We are just. We are justified through Jesus Christ. I want you to know, he said, this is the genealogy of Noah. Now was a just man. Get this. Perfect in his generation. And what does he say? And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth, understand, there's a division here, there's a dividing. See, that's the thing. You know what? Sin divides us. But with the God effect and the God effect in our life, then there's this bringing back to God. You know what? Sin separates, but God's bringing us in. God is calling out today to each and every one of us to come to Him. Because here's what we got to do. There's going to be this idea. You're either going to be in the ark with Noah, you're going to be that one that's going to be saved, the one that's going to be craving with God. You know what? The deliverer. When I looked up that idea of ark, and we'll get into that more next week, but the ark is like a coffin or a box, and it said, get this, folks. It said, you know what? That's how God delivered Noah. <laughs> Through his grace. He was to say, but Noah found grace. Noah found grace in God's eyes. Or in the Lord's eyes. And I want you to understand, verse 11, let's finish there real quick. Verse 11 says, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Wow. We are corrupt. There's only one way back. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. You know, and I was going to tell you, that idea of the ark, as Noah was being instructed to build an ark, and then that ark would be like a box or a coffin. It was also a picture of the description of what Moses would have been put in when he was put into the Nile. The deliverer would come. The, and that, you know, God would use Moses. Think about that. God delivered Moses from being killed. God also delivered Moses that he may become a deliverer. Deliverer of his people. Just this idea that our deliverer is Jesus Christ. Our deliverer is Jesus Christ. I want you to get this idea of how God is the deliverer. God, all of God's promises through Christ are yes. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I want you to listen. Genesis 6, 6 17 through 18. And behold, I myself, this is God speaking, I myself will bring flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven and all flesh, which is in the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant promise with you and you shall enter into the ark. You and your sons and your wives and your sons' wives with you. Folks, I want to tell you something. The best thing that you could ever do for your family today is to know the deliverer. To know the one that can save us from all the wickedness, the one that can save us from the wrath to come. His name is Jesus. I pray that you trust, like Noah did, trust in God's promises. Trust in God's word and be found to be walking with God. That the Lord might do as he did for Noah. That he too might send uh, his grace that we may be found, that is, to find grace in God's eyes. Pray with me.
Father God, Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for the truth of it. Father, we thank you for the fact that you are our deliverer. And Lord, that we know, just as Paul said, as he found you as his deliverer, as he found the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, and Lord, as he began to live out the promise, even though his life was filled with stress, Lord, if it was filled with accusations, if it was filled with uh, so many people turning their backs on him, Lord, you always was with him. You never left him nor forsake him. And Father God, Lord, uh, he lived out that promise that he shared continually, letting his light shine. He was. Lord, uh, for some people, Paul was the salt in the wound. For others, Lord, he was the salt that preserved their life. Because they one took it one way and another took it the other way. But Father God, Lord, we know this. Paul never lost his saltiness. He never became something that needed to be thrown and trampled under the feet of men. Lord, I pray that we're not. I pray that we are found as no. That, Lord, that we would find ourselves walking with the Lord and that we might find grace in your eyes. Father God, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the message that you have given us, Lord that we may take it now and apply it to our life. Lord, that we may be found serving you for letting our light so shine before men that they would glorify our Father in heaven. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.